decision to make this morning on Scott Quinnell's fitness. Are you sure you made the right decision? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Scott's a big player, big game, big occasion. He's up for the job. How bad is the injury that he's had? Well, obviously he's battered and bruised throughout the season, but he's had this sort of problem that uh, has got better during the week, and we were quite confident, really, that he would play. But obviously, given medical opinion, he was all clear and fit to play. It's a thumb injury he's got. Will he play with a lot of strapping today? And he'll have some strapping on it, but uh, I'm sure once he gets out there, he'll forget all about that and just get on with the game. And you've named Chris Wyatt in the back row today. What's the thinking there? Well, obviously, we've um, experienced. Chris is a big, uh, big match player, and I'm sure that he'll relish being in that position. He's an experienced back row player, and uh, I'm sure he'll do a big job for us. Now, you've been in this slump, of course, the last few weeks. Are you uh, confident you can overcome that and win here today? Absolutely. It's a, it's a, a huge game for us, and we're renowned for turning those big games around, and this is, you know, an ideal situation. Uh, it's going to be a big task. Uh, Gloucester have got a, a formidable outfit, and I'm sure that uh, we'll be up for the task. I understand you've been watching videos of uh, your own performances in this tournament last season. Yeah, I think it's anything to pick the lads up. Uh, obviously, give them the feeling of confidence where we have been. And, you know, we're top of our group, let's not forget that. And, uh, you know, here's an ideal opportunity to make sure that we finish up uh, top of the group. Anthony Buchanan, Panetti's team manager, talking to Graham Thomas. And when he mentioned Scott Quinnell and whether, well, that he had to play him, I mean, both of you were oh. just nodding, saying, yes, he, they had to. He had to play, you know, he's the, the main ball carrier. I think Bucks would say, no, I'm medical, uh, you know, med part is medical. Even if he hadn't passed it, he would have been playing. Injections, uh, anything, get him on the field. Just get him on. What's vitally important with Lashley this afternoon is that international players perform like the Cardiff players did yeah. last night. You know, Robbie McBride, sort of uh, David James, they've got to have big games if, if Lashley going to win this, this game. Also, Stephen Jones hasn't been playing well. He's in a bit of pressure. And uh, hopefully, you know, Jinx's performance will have inspired him today because, you know, if they don't get a lot of ball, his decision-making is going to be crucial. And he has, he has to have a good game this afternoon, uh, Steve. He's goal-kicking as well. Which yeah, can be can't a bit, afford yeah, to miss him. He can him, be yeah. a bit in and out, you know, Stephen Jones, and that needs to be spot on this afternoon. They all need to play well, I think. Yeah, it's I know, a tough yeah. game, and it's a game they have to win. And to win it, all of them have got to play well, because you know it's difficult going to Gloucester and, and getting anything. Even when they're in a slump, their crowd will get behind them. It's the worst place to go. Yeah, it's, not like, it's not like other sort of English grounds. You can go to, we've been to Wasps and you've been yeah. to Harlequins, and it's not really the atmosphere or the passion there that it is in Kings Home. And, mm -hmm. you know, Athletic players will feel that this afternoon. Well, as you said, Gloucester have been playing that well, and they'll feel the pressure as well. Um, uh, Kingsley Jones, mm -hmm. uh, Gloucester captain, ex Wales leader, of course, you know, he's been saying that this, he feels, is the biggest club game that he's ever been involved in. I mean, that's a big thing to say, isn't it? I'm pretty much over here, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm joking. That's, that's the importance now, though, of the Heineken Cup, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've all missed it the last 10 weeks, and all of a sudden, all the excitement's come back into sort of into European rugby again. And it is vital for Gloucester. I mean, you know, they're not going to win the sort of English league. So for them to progress and to sort of satisfy supporters and sponsors and the man who's putting all the money in in Gloucester, they've got to do well. I think that's the point. Uh, Mike said, domestically, this could be their last lifeline into Europe next year. And, you know, you, you can appreciate that everyone wants to play in Europe. And well, let's um, not forget the money side of things. Well, that's, you know, in a professional game, that's it. It's all about money and incomes and keeping your players. And, you know, if you, if you drop out of Europe, it's difficult to get back into it. So, you know, they're not doing well in the, in the domestic league. So you know, this is their last chance, maybe. Yeah. And, of course, it's been difficult for the teams as well because of this 10-week gap. It's been 10 weeks since they last played in the Heineken Cup game. Well, it's been, it's been ridiculous, really, isn't it? I mean, there was mm. so much momentum with the tournament, you know, before they sort of called a halt to it. The sponsors, you know, everybody, the players, um, huge crowds. And now we've sort of, um, we've had this hiatus, if you like, but glad it's all back on. Let's just hope they learn the lesson for next season. I think the atmosphere there, look, it's, it's not a, an empty seat. The terracing is full. There'll be a, a huge noise. And, if anything, that could lift Clenetley because they haven't been having great crowds down in Stradi for some reasons, and, and that's the table again. You know, the, the good thing that Roma's in there, and uh, you know, they might go through on tries, but hopefully they, they won't need that. And uh, I just I just think that they, ha they have to go there and perform today, and, and with the, the close closeness of the spectators, it could lift Clenetley. Hopefully, they've done it in passes, and then they've won yeah. away in France a couple of times, which is uh, which is very difficult to do. So they've got the experience of that, and they'll have to draw on that not this afternoon because King's Home is as intimidating as any French burn. Yeah. But we can see there a bright blue sky and the sun is obviously shining. Now Gloucester isn't that far from Planetley, is it? So hopefully 
uh, there'll be um, busloads of Llanelli supporters there as well. Well, they have, they have a lot of, um, you know, um, support at home, Gloucester, even though they're in slumps, they still, uh, you know, go to watch their rugby team. And I think it'd be difficult, I spoke to a guy from Gloucester yesterday and he couldn't get a ticket, so it's, it's, it'd be interesting to see how many supporters actually, uh, you know, actually had a load into the ground or got a ticket. I'd be surprised if you hear many Slatley supporters because the, the Gloucester support is, you know, it's amongst the best in England. Really? And, and it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's, you know, it's famous for the, the shed in, in Gloucester. Very intimidating for opposing teams and Slatley will feel the full force of that this afternoon. They'll have to keep their nerve, especially in the first 20 minutes, be disciplined. You know, they've got to stop making the mistakes they've made in the last few weeks. And uh, if they get a good start, who knows? Well, my call, Jonathan Davis, thank you very much for now. It's kick-off time. The players will soon be coming out on the pitch. And uh, I'll hand you over to our commentators this afternoon, JJ Williams and Hugh Llewellyn Davis. Thank you very much, young Harad. And welcome all on a beautiful afternoon here to King's Home in Gloucester. It's blue sky, it's uh, sunshine, it's cold and crisp. Not a breath of air. So uh, all set, the stage is set for what is a big, big afternoon for both clubs. The programme notes here today claim that Gloucester against Tanethi is traditionally not just a game of rugby. It is a gladiatorial battle, they say. It's tribal. The English against the Welsh. It goes back a long, long way. No matter how many overseas players are nowadays in the two teams. Now add to that the fact that today it's make or break for both teams in their quest to progress in Europe and you see the magnitude of the occasion. And the atmosphere is amazing. You can almost touch the tension in the air. Scott Quinnell leading out Sanetti. It is intimidating. As the boy said in the studio, JJ Williams, it's like no other ground in England. It certainly is. Uh, the shed on the far side of the field notorious. But there is a sprinkle of Scarlet fans over there. How they've got tickets and got in the middle there. I just don't know. It's the Cherries against the Scarlet. Scarlet has just come onto the field. International atmosphere. Intimidating place to play. But Kalecki knew all about it and all about peaking at the right time. That was Jenkins surely has prepared him for this occasion. A passionate Welshman, Kingsley Jones, solemnly leads out Gloucester. The firecrackers are buzzing everywhere. This really is a tremendous afternoon. And if we weren't excited before, we are now. Both sides having a tough time in their respective national leagues. They know the season's success depends on what happens here this afternoon. Colin McAdams Jenkins uh, on the pitch 15 minutes ago and they were targeting Ian Jones as the main man in, in the Gloucester pack. He's the one they're going to have to compete against. Gloucester have left out their international scrum half Andy Gummersell. Elton Moncrief starts there. His partner is Simon Mannix. Tanetti will be wary of the centre partnership. Jason Little and Chris Yates so influential in their victory at Stradi Park. And there's a massive physical presence up front, especially the front row. They're all internationals. Woodman and Vickery for England, and Azam for France. Tanetti have sprung a surprise or two in their selection, notably Garen Evans, normally a wing for the out-of-form Matt Cardi at fullback. So plenty of pace in the back three. Up front, Chris Wyatt moves back to the back row for the suspended Ian Boubia. Vernon Cooper partners Craig Gillies at lock, so an extra line-out option. And Martin Madden still preferred to John Davis at number three. And Tanetti skipper is the inspirational Scott Quinnell. So the stage is set. It's Didier Mene of France in charge, assisted by Daniel Julier and Daniel Prouvard. In bright sunshine, that's the man who has the responsibility of keeping a calm head and making cool decisions in the frenzy of the afternoon. First kick to Tanetti. Stephen Jones gets it underway. Tanetti top the group. But they played twice against Roma. And uh, that luxury still awaits both Gloucester and also Colombia, the other two competing teams in this group. Did you many? It's a shrill blast. Yes, that was a good chase by Kalecki from that kick out. Just Chris Yates, the big centre, took the kick, the high kick off from Stephen Jones, but the Kalecki forwards got there first and took the ball, and they have the first putting at the scrum. Rupert Moon slings it out to Stephen Jones. It's a bad pass, but that's the physical presence of Stephen Jones. One of his strengths at outside half. Martin Madden with ball in hand. 
kept John Davis on the bench for the past few weeks. Stephen Jones, cool, pumps it towards the corner. Chris Cutling is there, it's a kind bounce, and he clears right into the shed. Yes, he wanted that ball to roll on into that corner. That looked very composed there, Stephen Jones, when he took that ball. Wasn't a great first pass from Rupert Moon, and that is going to be a crucial part of the Klecki game today, that Rupert Moon can get that ball away. He hasn't play, been playing in great form this year, so it's important that Moon is back to the form that he had last season. There are busloads of Fanetti supporters here. They've travelled by car, by bus, by train. Vociferous in support. They know their season depends on what happens here today. Sanetti on the Gloucester 22, Rupert Moon. Wayne Proctor on the right wing, wearing 14. And it's Moon again, Madden waits. This time probes the narrow side. And that's the other prop, Phil Booth, both had periods in Cardiff, those two Tanetti props. That's the man from the West, David Jones from Aberairon at flank forward. Saleti Finau, strong at centre. And it's an encouraging opening by the Scarlets, that Proctor again. No way through, but it is penalty for Tanetti. And Stephen Jones can get three points to reward them for their early pressure. Yes, early pressure indeed, Hugh, and uh, good build-up. Good continuity, and they were waiting for the penalty. Gloucester were well. They defended well for the first uh, half a dozen tackles. Then, in the end, they had the penalty had to come. Surprised where Kleki used the blind so much when the centre, David James, was screaming for the ball out on the left-hand side. Philippe Saint Andre, the live wire Frenchman, great wing three quarter in his day. Director of coaching now here in the West Country. Stephen Jones, 66 points so far this season in Europe, chips it nicely, confidently, successfully as well. Finesse lead, three points to nil. And they deserve those three points, because it's a good start from the kick-out. They, de they denied Gloucester the possession. And then when they won the ball, they put it through half a dozen phases, getting the penalty eventually, and been rewarded with a lovely penalty kick by Stephen Jones. And that'll give him confidence. Simon Mannix. Phil Booth again. Moon is behind. Not quite as far as the scrum half would have wished. But David Jones tries to make it for Netty ball. But it has been touched forward. And Gloucester will have the put in at the set scrum. Good chase in there by David Rees Jones. He chipped that ball ahead. And he was up the open side wing forward. Up to jump for the ball. Unfortunately, it was knocked on by the following up player. Wait for them, wait, wait, hang it. Trevor Woodman, English international, on the loose head. And a slight surprise, perhaps, wait, that Tanetti have weight advantage up front, certainly not in the front row. They're conceding a stone a man there. Phil Booth, McBride and Madden, two Woodman, Olivier Azam and Phil Vickery. The 19 stone of Vickery contributing substantially to that. Good pressure applied by Gloucester. That was Tom Bime up on his opposite number. Yates, who carved up Panetti at Stradi Park in the pool opener, it seems months and months ago. Elton Moncrief, the man preferred to the English international Andy Gummersall this afternoon. Helping is Mannix. Swings it out wide, Proctor is there, the interception, but the whistle has gone. Tanetti offside this time, did he MNA? First one, second one. Watched for a long, long time, and Proctor is denied. Gloucester have the chance. Yes, I don't think it was Wayne Proctor was given offside, I think it was players closer into that mall. Proctor times his run beautifully there, if he'd caught that ball he would have been away. But it all came from that high ball that uh, Gloucester put in to Wayne Proctor, remember? Klecki having to play into a very strong sun. I think he lost it in the air there, which denied him the, the catch. Gloucester took it, turned it over, and now they, they have a chance to equalise. The floodlights are on at uh, King's Home. They seem a bit superfluous on such a bright afternoon. 
It really is glorious. January day. Here comes Simon Mannix. Not there. And that's relief for Tanetti. Mannix is very unpredictable as a goal kicker. When he is good, as the rhyme goes, he's very, very good. But when he's bad, he is awful. And Tanetti must wish that Simon Mannix, the New Zealander, has an awful afternoon today. It would help their cause. It certainly would. Remember, they missed a lot of kicks down the Stradley Park a couple of months ago. Mannix went off injured that game. That is Terry Fanalua. Across field it goes. It's a cruel bounce. But they're all offside, those uh, Gloucester chasing players. Fanalua said they'd put him onside. But no, they remained within 10 metres of where the ball came down. And Didier Mene, quite correctly, has penalised them for offside. But there was uncertainty at the back with Flecky. Then Wayne Proctor looked at Garen Evans. Garen Evans looked at Wayne Proctor. Someone should have come in for that ball. There is the sun problem at the moment. It's very low facing into those boys there in the middle of the field. Stephen Jones. That's safe. Despite the ironic cheer from the far side from the shed faithful. How much of a gamble is it to play Garen Evans at fullback, JJ? Well, as long as they win possession, he's there for the attacking ability. They are playing with a slight breeze, looking at that flag over there, but they want to use him as an attacker to spread that ball wide, which they haven't done so far, but they will as the game progresses. Two Welshmen, two captains stand right at the back of this line-out. Scott Quinnell of Thanetti, Kingsley Jones. Great character, Kingsley Jones. He'd be pleased with that as Gloucester steal the Thanetti ball. And on they rumble through the Thanetti ranks. But the ball is broken to Quinnell. The kick, the chase, Moon really pedalling hard up the far flank. <laughs> Great step to see Quinnell kick that ball ahead. No one expected that. And Moon, as you say quite rightly here, was the first man chasing. He's up for this game today. He knows he's under pressure. For that number nine jersey from Dwayne Peel down at Stradi by working hard. How did Kunal get this ball? There he is on the side. There he goes in, takes it straight out. Remember, Kunal is a man with huge upper body strength, and they've shown all his football skills by putting that lovely grubber kick in. Here it comes, beautifully timed, waiting for that bounce. I think they're talking here was the, the last line that didn't go well. Remember, the Cooper lost it, so they just want to organise themselves. Just Cornell again, ripping that ball out. And then breaking through Kingsley Jones's tackle. Big handoff, and then the kick ahead. You mentioned the line out, JJ. They're playing against one of the great line out forwards of world rugby over the past decade here in Ian Jones. Yeah. How many caps? It was 79 caps for, for the All Blacks. And you don't get that without being yeah. a great player. Well, he was the man of the match down at Strad, he wasn't he? Uh, apparently, he was the second highest tackler in the Zurich League last season. Quite amazing for a second row, that. But Fanetti do have an extra jumper or two. It's just Rob Fiddler and Ian Jones for Gloucester. Their back row is comparatively short by modern-day standards. That's better for Fanetti. Craig Gillies, it's a practice move with McBride and then Quinnell. Tanetti trying to drive through those Gloucester ranks. Moon. That's David Jones. Surely it's too confined on that narrow side. Even a tricky runner like Wayne Proctor can't find a way through. Unlucky for Martin Madden. He went against his own player and that's accidental offside. Yes, I was watching uh, David James there and Mark Jones. Waving their arms in disgust, they wanted that ball. There was a quick ball came from that line, and they insisted going up that blind side. With this, obviously, as you say, Hugh, no room there. Perfect ball laid back there. Madden again taking it on. This is the time to set it back and release the boys out on the out on the open. Tanetti topped the group at the moment. They played four. They won three. They lost against Gloucester. They redeemed themselves by winning superbly out in France for the second consecutive season. They Wait. won 19-6 at Colombia. Then they beat Roma. Why not? Expectedly. Why not? Why and quite not? convincingly twice. So that's why they top the group. Gloucester lie third at the moment. Played four, won two, drawn one and lost one. They drew at home against Colombia and were lucky to do so. Well, there's a bit of punching there. Done. 
David Jones. It was obvious retaliation by the young Welshman in the back row there. But that was spotted by Didier Mene, and he wants a word now with the number seven and his captain, uh, number eight, Scott Quinnell. Yes, losing your cool. You must keep your cool under pressure. There's huge pressure on the boys out there. Jake Bow and David Rhys Jones. David Rhys Jones, a youngster in the Kalecki ranks. I remember what happened to Phil Booth in that semi final? He threw punches like that. He ended up being Sin Bin Kalecki. Don't want that at this stage of the game. Twelve minutes played. Sanetti leads 3 0. They've had most of the game. The only reward for their pressure so far, three points from the right foot of Stephen Jones. But here comes the power again of that Gloucester pack. They're led from the front by Trevor Woodman. Up to halfway, Moncrief, Mannix slips it inside. He's a powerful man, Chris Yates. And as Mike Hall said beforehand, I'm sure that's one of the reasons Salesi Finau is in midfield for Tanetti to try and bottle him up. But here they come, that's Azam on the charge. Back to Moncrief, Mannix, it's Yates again. Yates out to Catlin, the fullback. Well held by Craig Gillies, the Tanetti lock. An important tackle that. Mark Jones is penalised by Didier Mene. He played the ball while still on the ground, said the referee. He can't believe it, but it is another chance for Simon Mannix. Yes, Mark Jones did try and stand there and play that ball. But Gillies did well, look at the big second row out there. She had held on to him there on the ground, but uh, full-backed as well there to, to wriggle free, get that ball back. There's Mark Jones there, he thinks he's standing up. Can he play the ball? I think, I think that uh, the Gloucester man's holding it in himself. Well, there's a difference in styles here. They've uh, Gloucester have immediately put some width to the game. Well, Schlecki had intent early on in this game of keeping it tight. What a difference to Cardiff last night, who spread that ball out from the word goal. Schlecki have different tactics. They're playing it tight and trying to drive through on the blind side. It's the second game of a triple crown for us this afternoon, JJ. Yeah. Three live games on BBC Wales. Cardiff last night. Panetti trying to uh, emulate their feet and then up to London tomorrow for the big one for Swansea, Swansea against the Wasps and encouraging news for Swansea and their pack by the way today Wasps will be without both first choice props so that should give Garin Jenkins, Ben Evans and Darren Morris a bit of a fillet before tomorrow but here it's the massive presence of Trevor Woodman, Olivier Azam and Phil Vickery in the Gloucester front row now threatening Tanetti, in comes Steve Ajomo Steve Ajomo at 8, Tanetti pulling down the mall Collapsing the mall, it's not allowed. Now then, are they kicking to the corner to use the power or because they got no confidence in the goal kicking of Simon Mannix? <laughs> well, to be fair, he's only missed one, hasn't he, so far? But uh, they're going for the try. They're trying to take the pace of the game up. And Ian Jones is the man. Ian Jones. And it goes to Fiddler. Fiddler linking with his forwards. Here they go. This is the big surge. Tanek have done well to hold it initially, but the threat is still no, no, no. there. Knock on, on oh, the knocked on knock on the line, said Didier Mene. And that's great relief for Tanetti. Yes, and good defending by them as well. Now then, this is a big strum for Tanetti. There you see the knock on, they're going for the line there. They've caught the ball, the line, they're driving it through, but they just drop it. Wait, wait, wait. Booth, McBride, Madden, the pressure is on. This is a big one. Teams with scrummaging power keep it until that scrum really counts. Yes, and this one counts. Yes, I think that was Kingsley Jones who dropped that ball there, the yellow headgear. Here it comes again from Moon. Quinnell, conscious of the pressure coming on. He's done well, the captain. He's taken it away a little, he's induced Gloucester offside. And that was great play by the Tanetti captain. Yeah, marvellous play. The way a quick heel picked it up, took the pressure off it. And it was Kingsley Jones is the man who came offside. He's the one who dropped it, and he's the man who's given the penalty. Well, he just brushes off the scrum half. Quinnell, now watch Kingsley Jones coming in here with the yellow headgear. He's the man who just dives on the ball offside. 
And as Quinnell was breaking away, you could see the Sanetti scrum retreating at a great rate of knots yeah. behind. Quinnell knew that could happen and so cleared the pressure before the problem did uh, create itself. Yes, to be fair to this Kalecki front row, uh, Young Booth and Madden are up against a very formidable Gloucester front row. Vickery and Woodman, great props, and Azam, the Frenchman in the middle of them. That's what Gloucester are going to attack most sides. Woodman is 18 stone, Azam is 18 stone too, and Vickery a massive 19 stone. That's what the Tanetti trio in the front row have to uh, counteract and cope with this afternoon. Vernon Cooper jumps a two for Tanetti against the experienced Rob Fiddler. It's Gillies in the middle against Ian Jones. Cooper's ball almost. Now it's loose. Jake Ball, Kingsley Jones, Simon Mannix, Jason Little, the great Australian centre who scored a crucial try at Stradi Park. Back, back, Fred, back. Back. Mannix. That's Vickery. Lovely pass. Now it's Ian Jones back inside for Panaloa. Exemplary tackle from David James. In low, under the knees. But it's still Gloucester and they're looking dangerous. Phil Vickery. Terry Fanaloa. Fanetti are offside no, again. Because of the crossing. On the ground, yes. On the ground. No advantage. Gloucester were of guilty crossing. of crossing, so it would have been penalty for Fanetti there. But Didier Mene was playing advantage. And so he's brought them back for the original offence, and that was committed by Sanetti. Yes, correct, yes, a good referee, and really, but uh, they look impressive when they move this ball. They took it to the left touchline, to Jason Little, then they brought it back to the right touchline, who is out there, but Ian Jones. It looks to be a tough afternoon for the Scarlets, yeah. because they're struggling in the set-piece, both scrum and line-out early on. Yeah. And that's Ian Jones' ball. Yeah, they come again. And it seems inevitable they will get there before long. It's one big, big surge for the corner. They're over, but the try can't be given. It's not a try. It's a penalty for offside. Although the shed, the far side, are celebrating five points. It's all a bit premature. Yeah, I can actually lucky to get away with that. Such a well-organized rolling mall. Yes. You can't pull it down, give the penalty away. Could have given a penalty try. They had pulled it down. He's given offside instead. They'll go for the line out again. He'll be quite happy, won't he? They're never happy, the Frenchman. Agitated. <laughs> Look at this well-organized rolling mall. How do you defend against it? Just got to hold it up, and it's all about upper body strength. But their body angles are so good. Where is the ball? It's at the back of that rolling ball. <laughs> but Schlecht will be given the penalty away. Fiddler's ball that time in the line-out. Here they come again. Fanetti desperately trying to hold Gloucester out. It's not pretty, but it's wearing down the Scarlets. But this time it's Fanetti scrum. They have defended stoutly, haven't they? Yeah, look at Stephen Jones there. Congratulating Chris Wyatt there for his defending. He took a few studs as well, Chris White on the ground. But it's a difficult few minutes for, for Scarlet's now. If can withhold that, this would be a big step for them. Midway through the opening half, there's been intense Gloucester pressure, but Sanetti still hold their slender lead. McBride, Booth, Madden, they won't be relishing this. In it goes again, again, Quinnell takes it on himself. Moon. Quinnell very aware, very alert to the problems that his scrum is going backwards and that's twice now on his own try line. There he is, has faith in his own strength to clear the pressure, brushes the first man aside and gains great yard for his team. This is his strength, isn't it? And the quick heel picking up, getting over that gain line. So good at that. Olivier Azam, in it goes again, it's pinpoint to Ian Jones, great throw, great leap, Mannix, E8, 
and that's why Finau is at inside centre to halt the big man in his tracks. Back, back. Let's turn back inside to Steve Ajomo. 12 caps for England in his days with Bath. Good tackling by Rupert Moon there. He was in there working Red. hard, hitting Red Ojomo back, and he's a very big Red man. Tackle. It's Gloucester number eight. Wait, wait for me, I will tell you. Wait, ready, engage. Well, it's tense, it's compelling, it's a great contrast to the opening half last night at the Arms Park. Free flow in rugby, tries galore. This is tight. Yes, this is much tighter than that game last night. It's more brutal, really. It's more forward-orientated. Cardiff are so superior to Ulster for most of the game last night. This isn't the case. There. There's two sides that are going at each other trying to achieve dominance. And neither has achieved it so far, even though that the Gloss are looking the set pieces that the, they have the upper edge on uh, the Scarlets. I think the breeze is freshening as well. It's behind Sanetti. So they'll be aware and conscious of that as they approach this second quarter. We have 22 minutes gone. And it's still Sanetti 3 0 ahead, courtesy of the early Stephen Jones penalty. Craig Gillies did well to stretch for that. But Moon was moving the wrong way at scrum half. Couldn't get it into open field, so it's up to Quinnell again. If ever the Scarlets needed an inspirational performance from their captain, well, here is the stage. David James gives chase, it's just a trifle too far. It's easy for Chris Catling at fullback. And what a counter by the number 15. Rob Fiddler sets it back for Elton Moncrief. Simon Mannix, the interception by Mark Jones. Oh, the whistle is blown. They were offside. <laughs> Mark Jones. His little run was in vain, he knew it, he'd heard the whistle. Although that won't subdue the, dear, uh, the disappointment in his mind. Yes, very alert, good reactions by Mark Jones. Charge that ball down, catch it. It's like he could have done with that try then, because they're under the cosh at the moment. Well, Tanetti knew it before they arrived, they know it now. They have to galvanise themselves into one great effort this afternoon. Their club form has been poor of late, so has Gloucester's. Both teams have lost four of their last five in the league, but this is one-off. And we all know about Tanetti in one-off games. Trevor Woodman. Tanetti have stolen that. Moon can get it away. Craig Gillies is there. Gillies, the big lock, the Englishman who joined from Richmond. Back. Stephen Jones wants to gain ground. That's not a good kick, though. And Cutling dealt with an awkward ball Back. Stop. with composure. Back. Stop. Yeah. Well, Sanetti stole good ball there away from Gloucester, but in the end, they've lost ground. Yes, that was a poor kick by Stephen Jones there. It was lovely, well set up by Craig Gillies, he brought it back in, they wanted a bigger kick down at that corner, he just chipped the ball ahead harmlessly and then Kathleen dealt with it so easily. Yeah. Well, the possession statistics surprised me a little. I know Tanetti attacked well early on, but uh, it's been all Gloucester for the past 15 minutes. Yes, but no points on the board here, and that's, uh, that's the, 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 the plus point for Tanetti. The minus points are that the set pieces aren't working as well. They should do well in the lineup because they have uh, Cooper, Gillies and Wed and Cunnell, very tall men there, so they shouldn't have uh, problems in their own throw-in. But Ian Jones always competes against the throw-in, and uh, he's a difficult man to play against. One of the great spoilers in the lineup. Yeah. yeah. Great athlete. An example to any young aspiring lock forward, Ian Jones. Azam. Fiddler, not in straight. <laughs> As I'm turned to the touch judge and he said, uh, wait, "Come on, you." Wait for me. From France. Wait for me. Wait, wait. Hang it. Bounce, bounce. 
Lovely. Celesi Fino. Strong in midfield, doing the job that Peter Muller did so excellently for Cardiff last night. That's better place from Rupert Moon. At least it makes Chris Catling stretch across field. And now he's got no angle at all. The help of Terry Farnua. So Rupert Moon's kick has yeah. gained good ground for the Scarlets. Yes, it was a good kick. He kicked it low so it hit the ground and bounced awkwardly for Catlin. And then great chase again by left wing Mark Jones. He's so quick out here, isn't he? Just hope he could get a bit of balls going run at the opposition. They've got two good try scoring wings, haven't they, in Mark Jones and uh, Wayne Proctor. They've got powerful men in midfield in David James and Celesi Finau. They've got to be used. That's Vernon Cooper stepping up at the initial tackle by Jake Bohr. Back! Back! David Jones again. Back! Booth. Back! 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 Stephen Jones for the drop goal changes his mind. there for Moon, inside is David James, pumps it high, that's good, indecision between Mannix and Woodman, <laughs> I think that's the first I've ever seen David James uh, kick the ball, a huge kick, so difficult to take then, and then bounce awkwardly as well, look at this, and it's a the front row man, I'm to deal with it as well. And who's the man up there first? David James. I just want to see him with the ball in his hands attacking. He's the man for Kalechi. It does show there's quite a breeze as well because that ball was carried much further than David James intended. Mark Jones's ball. Red, red. Jones chasing his own kick. Yes. He's done well. He's not only quick, he's strong as well. Stephen Jones, straight out to David James. Celesi Fina on hand. So many Gloucester players there, so there must be guts out somewhere for Tanetti. Can they be exploited? That's David Jones. Moon, Madden, they're still keeping it tight. Gloucester are offside. And Didier Mene plays advantage, the Scarlets. It's out, Stephen Jones. They'll have a penalty if they can't do better. Stephen Jones trying his best. Phil Booth. He's still playing advantage, and now the penalty will be given. Yes, and Rupert Moon giving Phil Booth a row there for kicking that ball away. They'd set up half a dozen phases. They were going for more phases, but luckily for Phil Booth, they've been brought back. There's a chance for Krecki to put three more points. And this is better here, isn't it? There's better rugby. They put, they won some ball. They put pressure on to Gloucester, and they put some rugby together. And if they can double their score without conceding any in that period of pressure, when uh, Gloucester were camped there for 10 minutes or so, then the confidence will slowly build. Yes, yeah, we said, uh, defending for that, as you say, 10 minutes or so was a crucial part of this game. They didn't concede any points, no penalties given away, or no, uh, no penalties kicked anyway. And they didn't score that try when they could have. And now Klecki put themselves back in a strong position. Our eyes on Rupert Moon, everyone else is on Stephen Jones. Up comes the Tanetti outside half. Nicely between the uprights again, so that's Tanetti ahead 6-0. And we've played exactly half an hour. Well, it certainly is a bruising encounter, it's not as uh, attractive as last night. It's a great cup tie. And nothing between the two sides, but Tanetti have got the points on the board, taking their chances. Mannix restarting, a man from Wellington in New Zealand. Good pressure there by Gloucester. Induced the mistake from Tanetti. That's Yates again. Back, back, back. Tips the scales around 16 stone, Chris Yates. That's Tom Byme on the, la on the left wing, an English international. Joined from Sale a couple of seasons ago. Rob Fiddler, 
dancing past Scott Quinnell. Back, 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 back. And that's the uncertainty of an occasional fullback. Yeah. Yes, he's, you know, he's going to take about 20, 25 to half hour to get used to the positions and the pace of the game. Hasn't played full back in the game with this intensity before. Slightly out of position there. You can see when Mannix was going to kick the ball, didn't know where to go and allowed it to run too far. And that was a difficult lineup to defend against. If they were going to play three wingers as the back three, a surprise in a way, they yeah. didn't select Wayne Proctor yeah. at number 15 as he has played in that position yeah. for Wales in the past, but no. Gareth Jenkins said that they wanted to try Garen Evans as a fullback for many a day, uh, for many a week now, but what an occasion to try an experiment. <laughs> go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Well done, Craig Gillies. That's a good take. Under pressure from Ian Jones. McBride, Booth, Madden together. The front row in concert. Kingsley Jones is offside. Well, if he's going to be offside, he shouldn't wear a yellow scrum cap. Oh, that's right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone knows who's when he is offside now, don't they? What a great, great drive again by uh, Chris Wyatt, he was with it. And then when the ball was laid back, Quinnell was there. Madden was working hard in the loose. That was the old trick in trial games, when trial games counted. If you wanted to John be noticed, Taylor. well, wear yellow socks when That's everybody right. else has got the black ones on. Yes, I remember a young boy going to watch some of the trials with John Taylor, who no one had heard of at all, played with a big, huge headband and got selected. And when I went on to have 30-odd caps, 20-odd caps. Kingsley Jones has got 12 for Wales. McBride again, taken by Wyatt. And Tanefi is starting to sort their line out, out. And that's Finau again. Celesi Finau, the Tongan in midfield. This is Martin Madden. Great run by the prop. Up to the 22. Now it's Moon. Stephen Jones. Straight out to David James. David James for the gap. Inside is Mark Jones. Superb try for Tanefi. Glorious score. And it comes to Mark Jones. That's his fourth in Europe. Oh. And what a fillip for the side. What a try. I was saying earlier, Martin was having a great game in the loose. But when he sprinted down the middle, I hope he wasn't going to chip ahead. He tried to sidestep, but he set it up so beautifully. Set the ball back quickly. And then lovely skills out wide. Look at Martin here now. And look at him. Watch his little sidestep he's trying to put in. Watch his coming up. Look at that. That's lovely stuff, isn't it? When he's tackled, lays the ball back beautifully. And this is the quick ball that Schlecki wanted. And then David James' skills again out there. Watch David James. He, I thought at one stage he was going to go through himself. He took the opposition out. Hole held that ball up. Great switch inside by Mark Jones. Great angles, great pace. Fabulous try. And the cup tie has turned incredibly in favour of the Scarlets. It's alive now. If it was buzzing before, <laughs> it's buzzing now. <laughs> well, oh, we are saying no. Yeah. So here we were saying they're using the blind side too much early in that first 15 minutes. But now they've released a bit of width to the game. And we've seen how devastating David James and Mark Jones can be. 13 0, and it's all down to the Jones boys for Tanetti. Mark Jones to try. Eight points for Stephen Jones, who's converted. And uh, Ian Jones has left the field. And uh, our Gloucester. About to bring on Adam Eustace. Uh, Ian Jones, such a great influential forward, trotted away when Mark Jones uh, scored his try. It didn't look anything serious. I wonder if he sustained a cut or two. And it's just blood, I don't know. But Eustace waits on the touchline. So it's uh, Gloucester down to 14. Fanesi are up to 13. And they're on the rampage. They're going. Could it be another? Oh dear, they got in each other's way. There were too many queuing up, and the try has gone a begging. <laughs> but they're rampant at the moment, he's lucky forwards. Look at this McBride right through the middle. Cooper then wanted to draw them on and just lay it back. The Madden, he could see the try line, he got too excited, dropped the ball. Oh dear, <laughs> how crucial will that be in the final count? Great storming run by Robin McBride. And look at them, the tight forwards are all there. They're lining up, 
Madan only had to take it. He was <laughs> in at the corner. And also there was Wayne Proctor. Well, well, well. <laughs> Ian Jones is back for Gloucester, by the way. So it was nothing serious. But Arsenecki scored again. Well, that might, you know, that'd have been fantastic for them. I wouldn't say they would have finished Gloucester off, but uh, but what is worrying for Gloucester, coach of San Andreas, how easily is Kalecki tight forwards are breaking through the middle. We've seen McBride do it, we've seen Madden do it a few times. They're on form with the ball in hand, that's great to see. Wait. Back, back, back. Elton Moncrief, that's into midfield. Proctor bravely up. Brave all his career. Wayne Proctor sustained some injuries because of it. Simon Mannix to place it behind Mark Jones. Now then, David James is back to help. Mark Jones trusts his pace. It was a good tackle by Kingsley Jones. And now it's Stephen Jones. And it's difficult to keep up with the Joneses. Darren Evans did just enough to bring Chris Catling to ground. Lovely hands by some of the big Gloucester forwards. And here's one of the best, Ian Jones, out to Simon Mannix. Now it's Chris Yates. Yates strong again, threatening in midfield. Another man from New Zealand. Tom Vime, kick and chase. Mark Jones has to be alert. Tanetti are offside. Didier Mene is very strict with that offside in midfield. We've had half a dozen penalties for the game for that in, in sort of type of incident. But Schneck have defended well here, haven't they? They've kept their line well. They've come offside uh, occasionally, but uh, Gloucester are finding it difficult now to, to break them down. Mannix against the breeze. Well, I must say, JJ, midway or just uh, towards the end of the opening quarter, I feared for Sanetti yep. because Gloucester were looking so strong in all aspects. Uh, they're looking more inventive behind, more powerful up front, but Sanetti are in the lead by 13-0. Well, they, they've taken their opportunities and Gloucester haven't. They defended well and, as I say, they've scored a superb try. We're creeping towards the end of this opening half. 38 minutes on the watch. Almost through the middle, that's Kingsley Jones. Looking for support, it comes from Moncrief. Moncrief, the little scrum half, they're flowing towards the Fanetti line. In goes Kingsley Jones, Fanalua plays scrum half, referee plays advantage. It's right there on the Fanetti try line. Cooper holding up his man powerfully, superbly. Many comes back and awards Gloucester their penalty for offside. But superb Fanetti defence again. Marvellous, well, they were over the try line there. Like he got under them to hold them, up to stop them getting that ball on the ground. But this is real pressure from Gloucester. They're a long way off being finished, aren't they? Now watch, there's Cooper holding him up there. He's trying to get that ball down. They're all under Moon as well. They know to get that ball down is a try. And then they give the penalty away, which they'll settle for. And it was uh, that massive man, Phil Vickery, I think, who was denied. Was it Vickery or was it Jake Paul? I'm not quite sure. But it was tremendous strength from Vernon Cooper to hold him up initially and wait for the support to drive him back. Yeah, this Phil Vickery, Vickery is an impressive player. His scrummaging is, uh, is huge. But we've seen him handling the ball, taking difficult balls and moving on in the open. Complete all-round front row man. Wait. Graham Henry is sit sitting some six seats away. Wait. Wait. And uh, he's on the sheet for Red. the Lions tour, I'm sure, Phil Vickery. Yeah. Yeah. Near side, front row. And Gloucester have gone for the set scrum. They want five or seven points before the interval. They don't think three will be enough. They want a greater reward. Vital moments here. 40 minutes are up. If Sanetti can hold them again, it will be a remarkable opening half for the Scarlets. They're piling in. They're giving everything in defence. Scott Quinnell's team. And Gloucester throwing everything into all-out assault on that Sanetti line right at the end of this opening half. There goes Moncrief to the blind side. He's through the gap. And again, Sanetti are holding them out right at the death. Moon gets his boot to it. No, no. 
Now then, is that another penalty? I believe it is. After consultation between referee and touch judge. And again, it's offside. Yes, I think when that ball has been cleared out of that record, Ruben Moon came offside there. Professional foul for him. I mean, Clecky, you want to be careful that no one gets in bin for these uh, continu continually being offside. It could be the final line out of the opening half. In it comes from Olivia Razan. High soaring leap from Ian Jones. In come the pack. Gloucester protesting, and Mene is behind the post. It's a penalty try for deliberately pulling down. And uh, that's a cruel, severe blow to Tanethi yes. on the stroke of half-time. And a crucial decision, and I know that we need to look at this again. That ball was available, the ball might have been pulled down, but the ball was available to come back. And to give a penalty try, it was uh, strict refereeing. But I was saying earlier, they've been continually offside in midfield, giving a lot of penalties away. I was expecting a sin bin, but not a penalty try. Mannix, it's two more, and that's changed the complexion completely right at the end of the opening half it was 13 nil it's now 13 7 now then what about the decision JJ well there it is it's the rolling mall Ian Jones took it given it to to Woodman who takes it the ball comes down they all look for the penalty try many as a running around the post listening to them straight away Moncrief is, was asking for it but I don't know I think it's his harsh referee and let's look at it again they drive in they pull the man down they have pulled it down, but they a penalty try, I think it's a harsh. Steve Ajomo leading. Fine run from Jake Poor. And now it's Gloucester's turn to have a surge of confidence. Moncrief probing. Great run held by Stephen Jones. That's Fanalua. Fanalua. A sweeping movement by Gloucester, just thwarted by Sanetti on their own 22. But the threat isn't over yet. And the referees play an advantage as Jason Little goes. <laughs> 43 minutes have gone. It's another shrill blast. It's another penalty for Gloucester. And David Jones is off for 10 minutes yeah. for willfully killing the ball. It was almost inevitable, JJ, yeah. as you suggested. Yeah, so I've been expecting a yellow card. I, I didn't agree with the penalty try, but I can't warn him much about uh, the penalties they're giving away on the yellow card. Well, great disappointment for young David Jones. Daniel Gillet had a word with Didier Mene. He's noted some uh, extra transgression here. <laughs> Mannix prepares here, John. I can't help casting my mind back to that try that Sanetti lost. Yeah. When Martin Madden dropped the goal, it would uh, drop the ball. It would have opened up a gap of 18 points. And now, as Simon Mannix puts it over, it's just three points the difference at half time. Gloucester have come back so strongly on and after the 40 minutes. Tanetti with a try for Mark Jones, eight points for Stephen Jones. Gloucester, a penalty try converted by Simon Mannix, who's also slotted that last ditch penalty goal. So at the interval, at a vibrant, excited, tension-filled King's home, the score is Gloucester 10, Tanetti 13. So, Tanetti are 13 points to 10 in the lead. They were 13 nil up, and then they had that nightmare last, what, five, ten minutes? Yeah, a bit of a shock in the last uh, five minutes. I think it all turned when uh, Martin Madden dropped that ball. You know, that could have been uh, you know, the, the end of the game, really, but... Uh, Missed opportunity and uh, Gloucester came back at them. And penalty try, uh, I think, persistent uh, infringement, and he, you know, I think he was he was going to give it sooner or later. And uh, they're back in the game. We've got a game on again now. 
But first, uh, let's have a look at the first try, Mark Jones for uh, Llanelli. And this was about 25 minutes in when Llanelli seemed to have lost it a bit. Uh, it was a wonderful sort of. Uh, Llanelli got back in a game at this stage, and, and Madden went right through the middle. I think of uh, Kingsley Jones's tackle, he'd have enjoyed that. And when it comes out here, the first time David James has had a bit of room and a bit of space to move. And you know, if he gets that, he can do damage. And Mark Jones, lovely angle again, very much like the try he scored down his strategy. Come inside, took the pass, and wonderful try. And at that moment, you thought, you know, Clatley are right back in this now, and they're going really, really well. I think it's quick ball, isn't it? You know, he hits the deck, he tries to step in. <laughs> falls and, over. Uh, falls <laughs> over, and uh, it's just quick ball. And they get it away, and I think there's a mismatch outside. They've got uh, David James on Kingsley Jones, I think it is. I'm not sure, I can't see from their own number. Takes on the outside, gets his hands free. And that's a great angle of, uh, of Mark Jones. He was patient when he waited until David committed himself and then he went. That was a, a lovely piece of running. And, and then, then, almost immediately, could have scored a second try, which would have made all the difference to the game, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. You know, they, they took that chance extremely well. And uh, if anything, this was an easy chance. Just breaks through that McBride. Look at the support. You know, just going then. It's Werner Cooper. It's a great pass oh. right in the basket. Maybe a little bit too hard. Watch this now. You can't get a better pass. He's screaming, the inside. Yeah. yeah, he's screaming for it, yeah, and you can see, you've got to feel a bit oh. sorry for him, because he's had a wonderful first half, he's carried the ball well, he's been sort of doing his work in the loose, he's been under a bit of pressure in the scrums, but if he could have scored that then, 18-0, possibly 20-0, Gloucester, you know, it might have been a long way back for him. And do you think that affected them a little bit, that maybe they lost it after, you know, that missed try? I don't know, I think it, you know, Martin Mann was, uh, was down, especially down, but I just feel that, you know, they had a life flying, so to speak, like Gloucester, and they, they picked the game, they had the opportunity. I think possession, whoever's been in possession, have dominated the game, and uh, Clearly haven't had the ball for the last 15 minutes, so they came back into it. Well, before we see Gloucester's try, we'll see one earlier on in the game, uh, a near miss for them. Yeah, this is when Gloucester was sort of dominating the, uh, dominating the period of play, and they, uh, that's what Clashley have got to watch, you know, that driving line out that Gloucester worked with Ian Jones taking the ball and, and playing it off. And I think, I think he goes through the middle, and it's touch and go whether he got it down or not, but you can see it from behind you. I think it's, is it Kingsley Jones who's just weaving his way through there? But the referee's right in the spot, so you've, you've got to go with his judgment there, and he said he dropped it over, but that was, that was a let-off for Clashley at that time, because they were under the cosh. But then maybe a harsh decision by the referee, penalty I, try for it's, Gloucester? It's difficult, I think. You know, they, I, I, I've lost count of the amount of penalties given. But if you look at Scott Quinnell, he drags it down. And uh, in a way, he has no option. Kingsley Jones have been rabbit in his, in his <laughs> ear. I don't know much French Kingsley can speak, but, uh, you know, he does a sign. If you watch it from the other angle, what Scott Quinnell, he's at the back there. The jumper comes down. Here he goes, pulls it down. And I think, you know, the pressure that they've been under, the penalties that... Gloucester have re had received, I think there's no, you know... It's, it's an ambiguous area though, isn't it? I mean, they're five yeah. yards from the line there, and it's down to the interpretation of the ref. One ref would have said, OK, penalty, and another one gives a penalty try, so I think Clatley can be a little, feel a little aggrieved there. What will happen now in the dressing room as they prepare to come on? <laughs> well, Clatley is still in front. I mean, yeah. I think they've got to be delighted with their first 40 minutes. You know, they, they've come here with no form or confidence, really, and after the first 20 minutes, you thought they're not in the game. But they've dragged themselves back up, they've got themselves in front, and they just got to keep playing the way they are. And I think that, uh, you know, they can, they can still steal this. Well, let's hope so. We'll be back uh, with you two in a moment or so. But uh, three other Heineken Cup games played this afternoon. Let's have a look now at the latest scores. Northampton 5, Biarritz 7. L'Aquila against Stade Francais. Uh, that game hasn't started yet. As we know, Gloucester 10, Sanetti 13. And then in Pool 6 is Poe 3, Leicester 17. Well, we promised you a roundup of all the football latest scores as well. I'll hand you over now to Ian Gwyn Hughes. Thanks, Ed Harrod. Let's start and have a look at the FA Carling Premiership latest. And uh, it's Arsenal 1, Chelsea 0 at Highbury. Robert Pires there with an early goal for Arsenal. Liverpool lead by two goals to nil at Villa Park at half time. Danny Murphy and Steven Gerrard scoring for Liverpool. It's goalless between Bradford and Manchester United as uh, Everton and Tottenham 2 at Goodison. Manchester City nil, Leeds 1 at half-time. Eric Bakker scoring there for Leeds. And Alan Boxic with a penalty has made it Middlesbrough 1, Derby County nil. Gary Speed with his fourth goal of the season has given Newcastle a 1-0 lead over Coventry at half-time at St James's Park. And it's goalless at the Dell between Southampton and Charlton Athletic. And Stanislav Varga has scored for Sunderland. They lead at West Ham at half-time by a goal to nil. Right, to the race course, there was an early goal there involving Wrexham and Bournemouth. It's half-time in the second division game 
And our reporter there, is Ian Beddell. Well, it's Wrexham nil, Bournemouth won that goal coming from their goal machine, Jermaine Defoe, on loan from West Ham. Ten goals in eight games before today. It took him just five minutes to make it 11 in nine. Passing on to a Richard Hughes through ball and firing past Dearden from ten yards. And it's certainly Defoe in his pace that's causing the problems in the Robins' defence. Wrexham, though, have responded well. They've certainly enjoyed a greater share of possession in this first half. At the moment, they're just lacking that final killer ball. Their best effort coming from the Frenchman, Imad Bouanan, just a minute before half-time, picking the ball up in midfield. His run took him to the edge of the box, his shot hitting the top of the bar. It's delicately poised here, Wrexham nil, Bournemouth 1. And Jermaine Defoe has scored in every single game. He's played for Bournemouth in the league so far this season. Right to the rest field, Swansea City really desperately needing all three points in the bottom four of Division 2. They're facing Peterborough, managed, of course, by Barry Fry. Half-time, it's not good news for the Swans. Here's Jeff Collins. Yes, Swansea are 2-0 down at half-time. It's been a scrappy game on a poor pitch, which needed two inspections before the ref could give the OK for the game to go ahead. The ball has spent more time in the air as a result than at your average basketball game. But it was Swansea who started the brighter, Stuart Roberts and Giovanni Savarese both coming close to scoring. But then Swansea's defence decided a short nap would be the order of the day. Peter striker Leon McKenzie found himself through on goal. The Swansea keeper Roger Freestone had to come out to make the tackle. The ball bobbled to Andy Clark, whose shot had to be cleared off the line by Christian O'Leary. That was the warning. Minutes later, McKenzie found himself with more space than the Brecon Beacons and made it 1-0. Shortly after, another defensive lapse and Andy Clark made it 2-0. Swansea left the field to a chorus of boos. It's Swansea 0, Peterborough 2. Difficult game for Cardiff City in the third division. Southend United are going well at Roots Hall, but it's been a good first 45 minutes for Cardiff City with this uh, update is Phil Steele. Half-time, Southend United nil, Cardiff City won. And a deserved lead for the Bluebirds after a lively and likely first 45. The goal came in injury time before the break. A long left-sided throw from Andy Legg led to a goal mouth melee. And there was Leo Fortune West to welly home from six yards. But Cardiff will still be disappointed because five minutes earlier, uh, Gavin Gordon was hauled down by Damon Searle, the former City man in the penalty area. But Kevin Evans saw his weak tee penalty saved by Darrell Flahaven in the South End goal. Other ch notable chances uh, came to Jason Bowen early on, put through by Fortune West. Bowen saw his diagonal shot from the right uh, edge of the area rose, roll agonisingly wide. And then Scott Young showed a total Toblerone instep in volleying wide from point-blank range. Most of City's best moves have been orchestrated by James Harper, who've looked, who's looked a class apart in the middle. And it all goes well for the Bluebirds in the second period. South End United nil, Cardiff City won. So mixed news so far for the Welsh clubs in the Nationwide League. The main news may be from the Carling Arsenal leading Chelsea by a goal to nil. We'll keep you up to date throughout the afternoon and, of course, home Wales on Saturday with all the football. Thank you, Haddad. And uh, just in case you've just joined us, it's half-time in the crucial game between Gloucester and Sanessi. Sanessi are in the lead. It's Gloucester 10, Sanessi 13. Uh, my call, Jonathan Davis in the studio with me here. Can Sanessi keep this lead? Can they extend it? Well, you know, this uh, happy at the end, three points in front. I think it's, uh, I think it is, a, it's a dour game. Two sides lacking confidence, but uh, you know, it, it is exciting in parts. But I think what Clancy have got to do when they get possession is to keep it. I think they're they're kicking loosely and uh, you know they they put themselves under pressure. So when they have it, they have to try and keep it and build as Cardiff did against Ulster. To be a bit more disciplined, maybe. Yeah, I think John is right. Don't kick it away. Keep the possession because when they when they carry, they're carrying well. Madden and Booth are finding some holes, and then when when they've had quick ball, they've looked dangerous. But Scott Cornell, if he carries on playing the way he is, yeah. clearly being with a shout, he's had an awesome first half. Stephen Jones has knocked his goals over. So let's fingers crossed they, they they could sneak it. Because it's such a crucial game, well for both teams, but that's what makes it such a difficult game for both of them as well, isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. Tlatli have done so well, I think, in that first half because they've come into this game. You know, they were booed at home last week against Glasgow. They were playing terrible, couldn't string any passes together, missing tackles, missing kicks, everything. And, you know, that first 40 minutes, they performed really well. And you, see, you mentioned during the first half that Gloucester seemed to be building a better platform than Tlatli. Yeah, I think they keep the possession, you know, they're, they're patient and... Uh, you know, they're not kicking loosely. It's, it's just a matter of patience. You know, if there's no gaps or there's nothing happening, take it in, you know, and if it goes down, you, you restart the game with a scrum. So it's vital because they are under pressure, because they have not possession. Then when they do have it now, they have to try and keep it. So because three points now, they'll go for, Manix will go for goal now. They, they won't go for the touchline. They'll get, you know, on even, uh, even terms. And then, you know, the, it might be down to a kick in do well. So... Hopefully, let's get possession and respect it and just uh, score again. And if we're all being truthful, we wouldn't have expected Tlenetti to be in the lead half-time, maybe? Well, 
Yeah, I, I don't think so. No, I thought that the, the Gloucester power up front would sort of uh, would tell. But you know, they haven't been able to put points on the board when they've been in Tlatley's half. Tlatley defended really well. You could see they're all up for it. Yeah. Stephen Jones, you know, when they sort of repelled one attack, was going around and slapping the forwards. Uh, and I think that they really, really want it, and hopefully that'll carry them through. And the yeah. defence is so crucial, isn't it? As yeah. we saw with Cardiff and Ulster last night, Cardiff defence, well, all season has been excellent, hasn't it? Yeah, but I think Gloucester are a bit stronger than Ulster in the forwards. And, uh, you know, if they get close to the Slatley line again, the referee will be under immense pressure, you know, Slatley, you know, keep on penalising. Once he's given one, you know, I think he's made the hardest decision. No, uh, given another one. Yeah, that's why I think really he jumped in too quickly. You know, some referees would have would have given Ogloster two or three yeah. penalties there, wouldn't they, before he's given a, a penalty try. So he's made a rod for his own back there, really, and made it difficult for Slatley. Because they are, they are, you know, struggling a little bit in the, in the set pieces, Slatley. Uh, uh, you know, the scrums under pressure. Mooney's got to try and get the ball away. And they've got to, you know, put a width into the game, which they haven't got at the moment. But, like I said, surprising that they are in front. They've, they've took the, the chances well. And, but they need to get more possession, otherwise I think it'll be a long second half for them. And of course, all that defensive play is extremely tiring for them as well, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, you know, it really takes it out of you, but I, I don't think they'll be worried about that. I mean, for, you know, they really, really look up for this game, and they realise yeah. how important it is to, to the National Rugby Club. They've, it's probably their best chance of qualifying for Europe to sort of get to the semi-finals again. And, you know, the way they're playing, I think anything can happen. David James is uh, yeah, thin well, Dav. Um, yeah, he's, that'll be a blow. First ten minutes will be hard now with uh, you know David off the oh, pitch. Of course, but yes, uh, you know it, that, that, that was just part of the bad five minutes actually. That, <laughs> yes. Put a cap on it. But uh, I, I just I just feel that Gloucester are back in the game. They, you know they, they think you know they haven't scored tries and they are under pressure lately. You know real pressure. But uh, you know if they can get as I said if they can get ball they're in with a chance. But they need to get a bit of width. They've got to support uh, you know, Scott Cornell, you know, there's not many ball carriers in the side and they've just got to share the workload and talk about tiredness, you know, you're, not, you're far less tired if you're in front and you're winning and hopefully, you know, that'll keep Lenny going. With an open side missing for 10 minutes, so I'd forgotten about that, the yellow card and all the melee yeah. that happened in the last five minutes, it's going to make it really difficult for Tlenetli and they've got to concentrate and just try and wear the clock down until they get the full complement back. How much difference does it make when you lose somebody like that, especially maybe one of your star a players lot. and they're out for 10 minutes? A lot. You know, it's, it's, in a game uh, like this. Especially yeah, in you know, yeah. It's, it's so intense and it's so physical that uh, all of a sudden you have seven players now doing, uh, you know, uh, eight man's uh, job, to be honest, and I just feel that if they can get away with... Uh, you know, still being in front or even drawing when uh, the back row of David come back so on, uh, comes on, I think they've done well. So do you think now Gloucester will come on thinking, right, they're one man down, so now's the time to hit? Oh, absolutely. They're really going to try and turn the screw in this first ten minutes and, and get back on uh, on even terms or in front. And that's why I think it tells probably in the last ten, fifteen minutes when you've lost somebody early in the game because yeah. they're all working so hard now, you know, for that ten minutes. It'll probably tell in the, in the end of the game. So, uh, we're going back to Gloucester now, and uh, the players, I believe, are almost ready to come back on the field for the second half. Just to remind you, Gloucester 10, Sanetti 13, and I'll hand you back over to our commentators this afternoon. It's JJ Williams, and first, Hugh Llewellyn Davis. Thank you, Ngharad. The sun is setting over King's Home. It's a beautiful setting in the shadow of the cathedral here, and... Uh, I wonder, will the sun set on Tanetti's hopes of progress in Europe before the end of the afternoon? Here comes Scott Quinnell leading out 14 Tanetti men for the first 10 minutes of the second half. And uh, those 10 minutes, well, needless to say, JJ, those 10 minutes will be completely crucial. Yes, uh, losing uh, David Rhys Jones now for the 10 minutes is going to be difficult for them. Remember the, the other two men in the back row. Uh, aren't the paciest guys, Chris Wilde and Scott Cunell. So I wonder if Gloucester would try and be width to the game in the first 10 minutes to know when National actually haven't got that open side out there. So it's going to be difficult for them. I'm sure that uh, Gareth Jenkins in the dress room has uh, been talking about the set pieces. The lineup must be stronger. The, the scrum now has got to work harder. They know they're good in the loose. They know they can beat Gloucester if they get the ball. But the set pieces is the problem. Kingsley Jones comes out. Leading the Gloucester side, gestures to the shed, the far side, claps his hands, gets the supporters going. He knows it will be tight, yeah. and it could rest on just one kick, just one mistake, just one try. 
he's a big favourite here in King, King's home, uh, Kingsley Jones, and uh, he was telling me that uh, he ha he ha he's hardly featured under Graham Henry since Graham's been in Wales, with Graham sitting alongside this year now as the Lions selector with David Pickering, so there's a chance for him to shine. He's having a good game, he'll be disappointed he dropped that ball when he was driving for the line, and given a few penalties away, that yellow scrum cap, but he is a good player, it's good to see him in action. The opening half, Tanetti had a try through Mark Jones, kicks from Stephen Jones, a penalty try for Gloucester, and the kicks of Simon Mannix, so it's 13-10 for Scott Quinnell's side as we get the second half underway. Rupert Moon, up the tram lines for Proctor to chase. It's a good take by Chris Catling. He had a very impressive opening half, safe under the high ball. Quinnell has called for it. Now, did it go back or did it go forward? Yes, he took his eye off the ball there, the Scott, didn't he? He's so rock solid on these high balls. His head was up, Kingsley Jones was chasing him. He's knocked the ball on. I'm surprised that uh, Mannix then had space when he had that ball. Why he didn't move it when you have quality players like Jason Little outside you? We've seen very little of Little, if you pardon the pun. A man of his talents. 75 caps for Australian midfield. And the great centre partnership of the past 10 years, Little and Horan. Now then, Gloucester, their first chance to exploit. The one-man deficit of Spinetti at the moment with David Jones off for 10 minutes in the sin bin. That's Trevor Woodman. If he maintains this form, he'll add to his two cups before long. The chase is on. First man back is the speedy Wayne Proctor for Spinetti. Yes, I thought Jake Ball was in front of the kicker then when uh, Moncrief chipped that ball ahead. Let's look, there's no one out there really had to chip it ahead. But I think he was in front of the, of the kicker. Tanetti, no hurry at all. These first ten minutes are survival for the Scarlets. That's right, good tactics by Stephen Jones. He'd want to help his forwards now in these next eight minutes. Mannix waits right on the centre spot. Garen Evans. Well, that's a fine kick by the makeshift yeah. fullback. We were discussing at half-time, JJ, with the breeze now with uh, Gloucester and Simon Mannix. If they're going to kick a little more, would it be wiser for Tanetti to introduce Matt Cardi? But the first touch from Garen Evans in the second half is very encouraging. Yes, it's a difficult first half for, for the, the wing player at full-back. He's a very talented boy. We haven't seen him attack yet. That's what Kalecki will want to do, is to get Garen Jenkins, Garen Evans into these open spaces. Olivia is on with Rob Fiddler to aim for in the front line. Ian Jones, that's not straight. That's the second from uh, the Frenchman at hooker. Two caps for France against Argentina and Romania for the man born in Tarb. And Tanetti, sensibly perhaps, down to seven men, have gone for the line out and not the set scrum. That's right. They were struggling with eight. Well, they got, it did improve as the first half went on did the line-out. Ian Jones did a lot of good disruptive work on the Tanetti line-out early on, but then the Scarlets have got that settled, and they've won their ball comfortably since. Moon, Stephen Jones. Didier Mene had blown his whistle before Gloucester appeared with the ball. Try, try to go, try to go, you didn't try. So it's penalty Tanetti. And a glimpse now of the physical nature of Stephen Jones's game, and that's what Graham Henry likes about the Tanetti outside half. Yes, I don't like it though. I, I, I think you're better off shipping it out to in, to Fina or David James to take that ball on. Like I say, Ojoma there was on the wrong side of that uh, of that rack, and that was a good chance for uh, Stephen Jones. A 40-meter kick right down the middle of the field. Like he could do with three points now. He's not a prodigious kicker, Stephen Jones. Not like Lee Jarvis, perhaps or even Neil Jenkins on the evidence of last night. And this against the breeze is just about on the limit. Here he comes. A nice little chip. And it's there. Well, what a boost for Tanetti. 
down to 14. They would have been quite happy not to concede in this period, but to add to their score is a feather in their cap. And that's the way to start the second half, isn't it? The ball into midfield, get the penalty, put three points down the middle of the post. Good kicking by Stephen Jones, and the forwards will be happy with that. Finetti outside half hasn't missed all afternoon yet. Barge in the man before the ball arrived. Tugging at Chris Wyatt's shirt. And the guilty party, uh, the great all black Ian Jones. Robin McBride slowly arrives. Vernon Cooper poised at the front for Thanetti against Rob Fiddler. It's Craig Gillies in the middle. And that's where the ball has gone. Good, quick ball from the top. Fine pass from Moon as well, dragging Stephen Jones forward. Moon. Madden. Booz. They're trying to punch some holes in the close. Lost the defence. But no, he held on after the tackle. Brings the team. Brings the team. Mannix for goal. A groan from the shed. Now then, the supporters would have preferred uh, Gloucester to go for position, perhaps. Well, I know every point counts in this uh, tense match, really. I think Klecki went for the three points, so uh, Simon Mannix wants to put three points on the board for Gloucester. I think it's sensible tactics. There is a breeze blowing with him as well, within his capabilities, and they will welcome three points. It's that close a game. Fanetti lining up under the posts. Yeah. <laughs> They'll jump high and try and prevent it if it's going there, but they can't. It's a great kick by Simon Mannix. That will restore his goal-kicking confidence. So Stephen Jones's penalty for Sanetti has been answered by Mannix. And the score creeps up to Gloucester 13, Sanetti 16. But we've had eight minutes of the second half. And that means that David Jones will return in two minutes from now. And Sanetti will be up to their 15 once more. Quinnell, great challenge. Didier Mene, the experienced international referee from France, decided that the Netty captain had knocked it forward. Well, let's have a look if he does knock it off. Well, he interferes with him in the air, really, but I don't think Canel knocked the ball on at all. It might have ricocheted from his body, yeah. but there were no hands involved. Ball! Stay ball! ball. Elton Moncrief, Simon Mannix, in his own 22. But it's straight downfield. Darren Evans is a big line of Gloucester men at, but they've worked some space cleverly for Nettie, and here goes Mark Jones. Mark Jones into midfield. Who's back there? Olivier Azam, the Gloucester hooker. Over the top, over eager to Nettie. In the ruck, in this side. You cannot come in the ruck in this side. Cannot join from the side. side. Yes. This Booth is up there working hard to get on to that kick ahead. But Cornell has been penalised for coming in from that side when he thought he came in from the, from the, the rear foot. A little doubtful decision on the far touchline as Mannix kicked. Mark Jones thought he'd kept the ball alive, as did Garen Evans there. Shaking his hand ruefully as he goes back to the full-back position. But touch judge said it did cross, so it's a Gloucester line-out. Fanetti have stolen Gloucester ball. Stephen Jones out to Salesi Finau. Hesitated before almost punching his man out of the way. Play on! Play on! Play on! Stop! Stop! 
good clearance as well by the Thanetti outside half. And it's an encouraging ten minutes for them. David, James, jo David Jones is poised to return. And it's been 3-all in the period when he's been absent. Yes, they'll be satisfied with that. Because they've won most of the possession of the second half. Fino, they're such a strong man. Getting over that odd metre that he can make. As we saw last night with Peter Muller for uh, Cardiff in midfield. Ian Jones having a word with his hooker, Olivier Azam. And Fanecki now challenging the Gloucester ball well in the line-out. So a little reversal from early on. Elton Moncrief, Simon Mannix. High, inviting to be chased. Proctor is safe. Collard, literally by Tom Byam. It's all slow for Tanetti, so it'll be up the tram lines. But there's no winger there to chase. Chris Wyatt has to do the job. Done it well, held Chris Catling, dragged him back a little. But Gloucester are in control of this uh, rock ball. Quinnell back for Tanetti. Chris Catling. Proctor did his level best to turn Catling and gain Fanetti possession, but it's still Gloucester ball. Five metres inside Fanetti half. Moncrief. Mannix again. There's a little gap there. Filled by Garen Evans. Just in the nick of time for the Scarlets. And he's turned well when tackled. Now then, could Fanetti exploit some space? Here goes David James. David James to Mark Jones. Mark Jones for the corner. Mark Jones can go all the way. It's a startling second try for Fanetti. It's a brilliant effort by the Scarlets. <laughs> Fantastic try. David James knew that he had an even quicker man than him outside in Mark Jones. Given that early ball and he sprinted 50 metres for another absolutely fantastic try. Look at this. David James didn't take the ball all the way, give it to him straight away. And then it's outside. Teddy Fanaloa, who's not slow at all, then balance and then strength and pace. And under the post he goes, his arm is up. That's just what the Kalecki forwards wanted to see the quick men. And we were saying earlier in the game here, if they could use Mark Jones and David James, they would do the damage. Exactly what has happened. We saw some brilliant tries from Cardiff last night. Flowing, length of the field moments. And uh, in a match as tight as this, Sanetti have scored two real beauties. Yeah, real beauties. Now an important conversion. Stephen Jones hasn't missed so far. Looks and misses. Yes, he tried to chip that ball then, didn't he? He didn't hit it uh, sweetly at all. But it just shows how quick these boys are out there. Mark Jones, David James in his best position in the centre, even though he might end up playing on the wing for Wales this year. But Mark Jones in front of the Welsh selectors here, showing that he is ready for international rugby with blistering pace. The guy can turn the game on his own. It's a second for Mark Jones today. It's his fifth in the competition this season. Chris Catling. Garen Evans has come. Was there a hint of offside even for Tanetti? No, Didier Mene has just given the knock on. But Robin McBride did pick it up in front of Garen Evans as it ricocheted from the Tanetti fullback's body. There we are, McBride, number two, retreating in front of his man. But just the set scrum for Gloucester. I move. Wait, wait, engage. Moon, so alert. Back. Knocked on by Tanetti, yes. just a touch. Let me whistling, please. Ruben Moon's working hard, isn't he? Hasn't had a great season, but he's having a big game today, helping his forwards. Cheering them up as he does in his own style. Wait, 
Oh, so wait. quick to get around that ball then wait. to take it off Leave Moncrief. It. Two superb tries for Tanetti. One penalty try for Gloucester. The rest are kicks. The Tanetti lead is eight points. But here come Gloucester with Chris Yates again. Jake Bo arriving. Well timed pass. Back, red, the flank forward was in full flow. Mannix turns back inside. Tom Bime is floored. Back, red, back. Well, Fanetti are far more ready for Chris Yates this afternoon than they were at Stradi Park. The big New Zealander tore them apart on that occasion. But here come Gloucester, again one of those irresistible surges upfield. They're just about 18 metres out, Mannix has gone deep. It could be a dropped goal for the outside half. But it's come to Garen Evans, Fanetti offside. So, Gloucester will have a second bite. Yes, and Karen Evans wanted to cut up that uh, right touchline there. He had procked outside him as well. They would have been away. But it was good chasing to try and charge that ball down. And of course, they were in the offside position before, the, before they'd got to the charge down area. And so, look, you can't really see it from this angle. I collect you were offside, and when this ball goes back to Mannix, they were already offside. So, if you fail with a drop goal, you have another chance with a penalty. And Simon Mannix duly obliges with three. More points for Gloucester, and it's down to five, the Tanetti lead. Well, Fileki know now how to win this game is by using those talented outside men. Mark Jones, David James, Garen Evans, Wayne Proctor, and Finau punching down the middle. If they force and get the platform for them, they go into the last quarter of the game, then they can win this cup tie. That's the little chip of Stephen Jones to restart. Again, Quinnell leads the charge. Gloucester cope with it. Back, back! Back, stay back, stay back! Moncrief. Darren Evans has come from a great distance to take it. He's done so well. Fanalua was up. The yes. shed protest, but that had to be Tanetti ball because it all came from a kick. Yes, they said they didn't get it down, but of course from a kick ahead you haven't got to. But uh, good support uh, by Mark Jones on Garen Evans when he went for that ball. And good chasing also by Fanalua. Hurry up! Moon, Quinnell. Back, back, back. One meter on the tackle, you cannot play the ball. Got to get away from the ball after the tackle. And there we are, coach of Wales, coach of the Lions, Graham Henry. With his binoculars. For Christmas. <laughs> Spotting the talent for the shows of Australia. Two British Lions on view out there, the same of Vickery, Quinnell. David James, where's he going to go on the Lions tour? He'd be a good asset in the wing and centre. Could Chris Wyatt be a contender? Oh, yes, of course. Robin McBride's ball. Vernon Cooper. Rupert Moon, Stephen Jones. Six, Deliberately back, looked for contact back, there to wait back, for the support to back, come. Back, shoot, shoot, yes, come and now it's Quinnell on the second charge. Hands on the ground by Gloucester, penalty for Nessie. You cannot play with your hands, please. No, it's a wreck. You play with your hands. It's the 19 stone of Phil Vickery there. Can't play it on the ground in a wreck, said the referee. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Talking to his countryman Azam there, telling him what's in French. The Azam goes back and tells the rest of the boys that they were uh, handling the ball in the ruck. So says our linguist JJ Williams. 
Now there's another important penalty. Every point is so important in this cup tie. It could extend Tanecki into a two-score lead again, and that's all important. It's five at the moment. Can Stephen Jones make it an eight-point lead? He likes it, and that's why the flags are up. Gloucester 16, Tanecki 24. And it's absolutely midway through the second half. Yeah, the Kleshi 4 has now got uh, standing up to the Gloucester 8, not intimidated by them any longer. The set-piece work is, is working much better. And Gloucester now ringing the changes. But the Kleshi now, if they can get this ball into the three-quarter line, Kingsley Jones is coming off, which I'm very surprised at. Andy Hazel is on. He's come on in almost every game this season. He scored at Stradi Park, Hazel, one of their two tries. So the skipper is off. Back, back, back. Moon. Pressure on Chris Catling again. Proctor did exceedingly well. And the ball is out of play. So good by Proctor. Waited for the man to catch the ball, come down to ground, then pressurised him towards the touchline. And Sanetti get their reward. Well, Wayne works so hard off the ball. The man is chasing, he does. The then glamorous work for the other winger. All the glory is going to Mark Jones, but Wayne has been taking his high balls, chasing, tackling. Great man, great player. Craig Gillies has set the platform. In come the Tanetti eight, surging, gaining good ground. Wyatt now in the vanguard. Moon, Quinnell standing off. He's taking a few more tacklers. And now is the time to spread it wide. Celesi Finau on route one, down midfield. Good play by Tanetti. Stephen Jones stood deep, thinking of a dropped goal. Went for the kick and chase. And Proctor again applies the pressure. Referee is paying advantage Tanetti's way. Rupert Moon wriggles out of the initial tackle. Tanetti driving, but Vickery has stolen the ball for Gloucester. Back, back. Now it's back Tanetti way. Now many. What did he see? Hey. Playing on the ground. It was hands on the ground, said the referee. I thought Gloucester might, might just have lost it. Yeah. A suspicion that they lost it. The well, Netty didn't finish it. Well, there was sharper referee, and let's have a look at it. It was a clacky hand coming and scoops it out. The ball is back on the Gloucester side. Where is the, where's the hand from the red jersey there to scoop it back? I can't see it on that uh, replay. But I thought St Stephen Jones should have moved that ball out wide when they had the ball. The difference is Stephen Jones tonight and Neil Jenkins is when they've had this ball, Neil has been putting these wide long passes, bringing in outside men. Stephen has tended to turn the ball, ball back inside. Chris Forty is on his hooker. So Olivia Razam has gone. Had one or two wayward throws, and that's uh, one of the reasons, perhaps, why 40 wearing 19 is on. Not 19 wearing 40, but it's the other way around. Moncrief. Jason Little. Moncrief again. Ducked under the tackle of Scott Quinnell. Ojomo surely went against Phil Vickery there, but play goes on. Back, it's all a little back, slow. Back. They're all very confined. There's nobody out left of this wreck, almost back. for Gloucester. That's the widest man, Chris Yates. Oh. Three. Penalty goes against Martin Madden for offside. He's been very strict to that uh, offside in midfield, hasn't he, uh, Didier Meunier? He's locked for it, and Klecki given endless penalties away fr from that sort of phase. Can we see Martin Madden here while well, he's in that, uh, in that mall there? That's where he said he was so offside. So attention is back on Simon Mannix. Missed an easy one early on. Kicked the beauty in the second half. Here comes Mannix. That's well struck. 
Three more points for Gloucester. Once again, Sanetti's lead is down to five points. Yeah, Gloucester just need the one try to equalise. Though they haven't looked like it second half, it must be said. And Kalecki have looked the sharper team when they've got the ball in the hands. But they've been denied a lot of possession in the last 15 minutes by this Gloucester 8. So if they can get some ball, I'm sure they can score some more sparkling tries. The cry is scarlet. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of Sanetti supporters up here. Proctor will deal with that. Safe as houses under the high ball. And the kick is well placed. Now Tom Bime is there. Don't move! Don't move! Well, Garen Evans could do nothing about that. It was a well placed kick by the Gloucester left wing. Yes, it was a 40 metre kick there and a very tight angle by Tom Bime. Hasn't had a chance to shine. He's a very good. Running with the ball, big strong boy, plenty of pace. But Gloucester have failed to move that ball out. And you can see that they use Fonda Lower out there as well on the right. He's a good runner, not to use these boys at all. Well, Sanetti lost that initially on their own ball, then it was knocked forward, and away comes Wyatt, supported by McBride. They're all jumping against the Kalecki throw there, aren't they? The ball bounces kindly for the Scarlets into Chris Wyatt's hands. Unfortunately, he's run into touch, McBride has. And Gloucester now have the throw in once again. Chris Forte, the replacement hooker. Elton McLeaf is in the line. The little scrum half is right at the front there. On the five metre mark. Good challenge by Gillies. Good handling. Rob Fiddler slipped it nicely to Woodman. Up to the 10 metre line. Determination again. Andy Hazel this time. Play on. Moncrief. He's been lively at scrum half all afternoon. Has really shown why he's been preferred to Andy oh, Gummersall. Now it's Jason Little. Responded, and here comes Stephen oh. Jones. There were men outside, the closest was Quinnell, Proctor's the chaser. Catling wants it to go dead, and it just about does. He shouldn't have kicked it here, he should have kept that ball in hands, Quinnell could have given it to Proctor. There's a chance to miss there, I feel. We're deep into the final quarter, and Sanetti still have their lead, their five-point lead, Proctor, Quinnell. Can he lead his side to another famous victory? Moon. Chris Yates finally touches it down to restart once more. Yes, Moon wanted that ball to bounce the other way then, so put a line of right on the Gloucester corner flag. Andy Deacon is on for Trevor Woodman. I think that's a blood replacement, though. Ten. Gloucester knocked offside it forward, everybody. but Sanetti were offside. They were within 10 metres of where the ball was coming to ground. And that's offside. Offside. Mannix thumps it towards... That far touch line towards the shed and gets the response he wanted. We've heard the cry many a time from a great friend of ours, West is best, JJ. But it will it be the West country of England today or the far west of Wales? It's still in the balance. Five points. The Sanetti lead. Gloucester 
won that opener at Stradi 27-20. Nobody expected that. It was their first ever game in Europe. Then they saw Roma away 52-12, but then 22-22, a home draw against Colombia. They trailed going into the final seconds of that, scored twice in the time added on, including a controversial penalty try. Shades of today. Will their power tell once more in the final 10 minutes? Fanetti are holding it well. So, they'll try it out wide. Good pass. Fanalua is across from the right. Good hands by the man. The Samoan international. They're building again, Gloucester. This looks dangerous. Chris Yates. 15 metres out. Elton Moncrief looked for someone to offload. There it goes again to Yates. Yates. Fanetti are offside. Oh, it's another yellow. And it's Saleti Finau. Dangerous play, he said here, high tackle, I suppose. First warning on him, well, we don't think he's been warned for any high, high tackles in this game. He's got the yellow card, and that's a crucial blow to Scarlett's now for, the, for how much time he got left. Well, that's the end of the that's game the for, for Finau. Yeah. 31 minutes on the watch, he might creep back for the final few seconds. If there are minutes added, now then what happens? Let's have a look at this, this is a high tackle. There's great defending for Feichelech again, they spread out across the field, no way through. But the penalty had been given. Simon Mannix, up he steps, over it goes. Gloucester 22, Sanessi 24. We have eight minutes remaining on the watch. And the hopes and aspirations for the season for both sides rest surely on what happens in those remaining eight minutes. Yes, and discipline in these remaining eight minutes is so important. Manex has got his kicking boots on, kick them within 50 metres range to the post, so Klechis have to be careful. Karen Evans, both sides want to play the game now in opposition territory. Gloucester want to get down there, hope for another penalty and steal the lead. Tanetti want to keep them out of range. No. That's all right. And here comes Quinnell. Moon is behind him. Martin Madden. He is well held there by Andy Hazel, the replacement. Hands offside. Antonetti can regain some confidence and regain a five-point lead. I don't know why Woodman is complaining there. A ball had come back and this, the turn into the rack, the rolling ball. When he's taken down to the ground, the ball came back. Woodman was left at the back and he played. Look, he's dragging the man off the ball. When he comes back, look, he's in offside position, obvious. Now this is a hugely important kick, and you can look at me and smile because this is desperate stuff for the Scarlets. The whole season no, no. will be saved Including in the next few minutes. Saved or lost. <laughs> Stephen Jones, what pressure. It looks simple. Yes! Three crucial points for Tanessi and for their outside half. Gloucester 22, Sanetti 27. It's so close to the reverse score from Stradi Park. It was Gloucester 27, Sanetti 20. Yeah, but it's a closer game, this. And Schlecki have scored the tries and have played superb rugby when they've had the ball in hands. Unfortunately, I haven't had enough of it, certainly in the three quarters. Back, back. Back! Lovely clearance. Well, if the result depended on quality of tries, JJ, there'd only be one winner yeah. because Sanetti have scored two beauties 
and uh, Gloucester's only try so far, a penalty try, deep into injury time at the end of the opening half. And to be fair to uh, Clecky, Gloucester haven't created much themselves. They've been strong up front, but they've hardly created scoring opportunities. And Clecky have always looked dangerous, the ball in hands. Clecky ball, David Jones, Scott Quinnell, Rupert Moon. Back. The experienced players have got to hold it all together now for Clecky. In the final five minutes, Gloucester have stolen it. Moncrief has it. Mannix, sensible pass to Tom Vine. Vine making inroads. Moon holding him. With a little help as well from Phil Booth. But now Gloucester are looking dangerous through Steve Ojomo. Great tackle by Stephen Jones. The referee is playing advantage. It's a penalty again for offside. How many uh, more times? I, I don't think they were here. I was looking at the Clecky midfield. It came from loose ball before that ball was moved over to the right. When the Joma moved it out and the Clecky boys were in, a, in an offside position. If a ball had been set up, it hadn't been set up. It seems inevitable in modern day rugby yeah. when a side moves third, fourth phase play and uh, they can't make any inroads in midfield. Then the referee blows and it's a penalty. Yeah, yeah, and Didier Many have been so strict with that throughout the game today. In fact, I thought, and now I'm totally biased, but I thought that Gloucester were offside. Well, Schlechi had the ball a minute ago. Mannix thumps it through again. Gloucester 25, Tanesi 27. And we have four nail-biting minutes remaining at King's Home. Well, we said about discipline. That's what it's all about now, isn't it? Uh, many is going to give pen penalties. Let's just hope he goes the way of the Scarlets. Well, it's about discipline, it's about character, it's about heart, it's about strength, stamina, fitness. It's all there. It's all in the me melting pot. Superb take for Gloucester. They've been roared on by the crowd. Karen Evans can't take it. And here go Gloucester. Mannix. The roar is on. Jason Little. It's out of Tom Vine. Super tackle by David James. Any score will do it for Gloucester. Jake Poor. Into the Sanetti 22. It's desperate stuff now from both teams. Phil Vickery. What's he doing in midfield? Gloucester swarming for the ball. Moncrief, Mannix, back inside. Little is half held. Jake Ford again. They're within five metres of the Sanetti try line. It's almost irrepressible. Catastrophe for Tanesi. The drop goal wasn't getting there, but it was touched over the bar by a Tanesi hand. And Gloucester had a head 28 27 in the most dramatic fashion. But here goes Tanesi straight back upfield. Oh, that was remarkable. Oh. If it all depends on that, well, it's the cruelest way possible for Tanesi to lose. Moncrief, this man will get all the plaudits. But it was Sanetti hands that put it over. What a period for Elton Moncrief. Well, that was totally bizarre. Superb defending by the Scarlet. They charged that drop goal down and it helped it on its way over the over the post. Totally bizarre. What a way. If they were to go out, what a way for them to go out. They certainly don't deserve that because they played magnificently this afternoon what a cup tie what an atmosphere in this stadium the scarves are held aloft in triumph is it premature Tanesi are down to 14 men they've just been struck the cruelest of blows if they come back from this it would be remarkable here comes Scott Quinnell we're into the final minute of the 40 at the end of the second half, at the end of the game and at the end of the road it could be for one of these two sides for this season in Europe.
That's Moon. That's Wyatt. Stephen Jones. They have to throw caution to the wind now, Sanessi. They have to make inroads. It's out to Proctor. Proctor with space. Here he goes. The kick. The chase. It's all on wing. Proctor. Can it come back to the Sanessi man? There were too many Gloucester players there. The bounce wasn't kind. Oh, this is dramatic. It's all drama. And it's picked up by Chris Forty, the replacement hooker. Back is Mark Jones. Another cruel bounce. But here goes Jones. Held in the tackle. Offloads to Quinnell. Quinnell does the same, twisting his body. And he'll get a penalty. Moon wants to take it quickly. The tension is almost unbearable. The excitement is at fever pitch. There's one point in it. And we're over the 40-minute mark. It's Gloucester 28, Sanetti 27. Here goes Garan Evans. Now it's Chris Wyatt. They don't deserve to lose the Scarlets. Out it goes to Moon. Now it's Mark Jones again on halfway. Stephen Jones. Vernon Cooper. They're not getting upfield. Now they could. Quinnell. He's given his all. Moon again. Proctor can't create more space. Upended unceremoniously in the tackle. Stephen Jones trying to burst through the ranks. And now it's Moon again. And the closer they get, the greater the chance perhaps of a late escape, a late penalty. Not at all. And a clincher from Stephen Jones. Driving up the midfield. Out it goes, Stephen Jones, that's too far. That's the wrong decision. It was out of range. And it's respite for Gloucester. It's the final whistle from Didier Mene. Gloucester arms are raised in triumph. Sanessi slumped to the... They've given it all. They're out in the cruelest way. The most bizarre of all dropped goals. Sanessi scored the sparkling tries. But victory is Gloucester's by the slenderest of margins. It's Gloucester 28, Sanessi 27. JJ Williams. Uh, speechless. A, a wonderful performance by the Scarlets. They give 150%. Scored two outstanding tries. Outscored Gloucester for tries. But then fate went against them. And you can't do anything about that, really, can you? But they can be proud. There it is. You see, it is half charged down. And that by Rhys Jones. That helped it over. It wouldn't have gone over otherwise. But devastating for them. But they played well. They're all proud for all their supporters here. The fateful hand of David Jones. What a dejection for the young man. No blame can be laid on him. He tried to charge it down. It wasn't getting there. It was under the bar. It was helped over. And that's the one fateful moment that means Panessi, to all intents and purposes, are out of Europe. Kingsley Jones and Gloucester still have their hopes. They go to Roma next week with their confidence high. Panessi face Colomia in a game that could be of little consequence to the Scarlets. There's still a glimmer, but the...